Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Music Writing Ranking and Reviewing Podcast of Electrical Music Meltdown, in which we rate, rank, and review any artist's discography, songs, musical topics, really whatever comes to mind. This episode is going to be a bit different, as I recently received a package from one of the co-hosts that have been on this channel before, being Patrick. He was selling off a vast majority of his CDs that he already owns on vinyl. That being said, I think you can see where this is going. I have a package with a large some of those discs right here. So I figured it'd be fun to just go ahead, grab it, and just unbox it and showcase everything that I got here from him. Of course, thank you very much for doing this. And let's just get right into this. Starting out at the top here, first record, being at Tapestry by Carol King. Admittedly, she is not an artist that I know all that extensively. However, I heard one song on here after finishing a um, probably Simon record, and I really loved it. I'm blanking on what it is off the top of my head. I thought it was really excellent. She just seems like a type of artist I would really enjoy. And because nobody else grabbed it, I sort of just picked it up right then and there. But then we have a jazz classic here with Bitches Brew by Miles Davis. A jazz style that I've been wanting to look more and more into and sort of get more overall familiar with. And I mean, Miles Davis is one of obviously the icons of the genre in and of itself. This being possibly his most iconic record, I figured it'd be a great way to sort of get myself in style. But I have two records by Peter Gabriel in Peter Gabriel 4 Security and Peter Gabriel 3 Melt. I'm a pretty decent Peter Gabriel fan. Um, I love that early period of Genesis, notably um, Trespass to A Trick of the Tail, I think is really excellent. Most of those records obviously have mm -hmm. columns. And these are some of my preferred solo records, especially Security here. My favorite one is So, mm -hmm. but I already own So. so. Yeah, Peter Gabriel, really interesting, really talented artist, and I was really wanting to get into him. But then we have a record that you'll hear me talk about a bit more soon, so I'll stay a little bit subdued on it, being Brainwashed by George Harrison. Obviously, his final posthumous release, really stellar record here. Fun with that, and have a bit of Trinity here, being Discipline, Beat, and three of a perfect pair in the 80s Kings King Crimson records, all incredibly strong. I love Adrian Ballou's influence on here. They're pretty much like a better version of the Talking Heads for me at this point. And I really like all of these records a ton, Beat being my favorite of them, and probably my favorite King Crimson. Nope, Right is my favorite King Crimson mm -hmm. record. Then they're all just super unique, super fascinating records. Ton. You know, another artist I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into, but the record that I did know by him, the songs of Leonard Cohen, really a beautiful 60s folk record that I really, really enjoy. I think the song reading is excellent there. And then one of his later period efforts I've heard is really great being I'm uh, Your Man, which I want to give a shot. That I have a bit more on Miles Davis here, being record in a silent way, as well as kind of blue. Once again, wanting to get more into jazz and one of the icons right there. It's another record that you've heard me talk about before and a record that you all know that I love being the Sock Bulletin by the Flaming Lips, a nearly perfect album in general, super unique, super spacey, just so much fun. Love it to death. Next two here is by one and only Marvin Gaye, two of his classics that I haven't heard yet, but the other stuff I've heard that isn't even necessarily his classic period, but I do love, I had to give him a shot. Being what's going on and let's get it on with Mervyn Gay. Really just an excellent record. So I will hope to expect. But the one that I really wanted for a while here, I'm looking to do these guys at some point in the future, although I may not be as positive as I would love to be. That being American Beauty by the Grateful Dead, just a really, really excellent sort of folky, almost country rock record. Super interesting, super cool. The question of the band with the Grateful Dead, it's not even initially expect, I would say. But I have a record like a band that it's kind of less talked about nowadays, but I know that this record sounds a lot of love being Throwing Copper by Bly. After Warren's band, I'm pretty mixed on as a whole, but my favorite record by them is Animals by Pink Floyd, really the apex of their progressive era. 
really just a killer record. Uh, another album that I really love from the late 80s, going with a Stone Roses self-titled, baggy, sort of early Britpop influence. Really fun record. And I have another album that I didn't talk about before, but has been brought up on the channel previously, being The Queen is Dead by The Smiths. Actually, The Smiths record that took me the longest to get into. I often struggled with this one. It's not really gravitating towards the songs, but really loved it on my last two reels and still probably only my third favorite Smiths record or so, which really showcases how great of a talent they were. Words here, one that I've talked about, but hasn't gone up yet. EXO by Elliot Smith. Really just incredible sort of Baroque sort of Indian sort of songwriter record. Love it. I'm an artist that has gone up and I've talked about for a while now. I have Super Unknown as well as Down on the Upside by Soundgarden. Love these guys. Super great, sort of harder, grungier sound. Obviously killer. Now these next two are actually by an artist that I was bringing the cover at some point, but I just I, I couldn't get through all of it. Although I do really like what I did here. It's going to be Lou Reed with his record in New York, as well as Transformer. No disrespect to Lou. I've loved the Velvet Underground, and there's plenty of excellent solo stuff here. From what I listen to, I listen to all the 70s stuff. And my favorite one of that would have been Coney Island Baby, which I gave four and a half stars to. However, it's just so much material, and it's really daunting whenever you're getting into those later periods that aren't necessarily as strong as a lot of people put them out to be. So I still really enjoy it. What I heard, but I just couldn't get myself to finish it. Whoopsie. Next up, we have two records by XTC being the Big Express, which I think is severely underrated, as well as Mummer, which I think is as well. These are the most underrated XTC records, just really excellent stuff here. I love them a lot. Or it's another artist that I want to look a bit more into because I actually don't know much at all. And I've heard this is one of his best being Apostrophe by Frank Zappa. Or he's just really interesting, obviously, great guitar player. Just really curious how I'm playing for me. Or it's an artist that I'm going to be recording soon. It's Steely Dan, but the only record of the classic period that I didn't own being Gaucho, obviously. Pretty good record there. For that, I have the self-titled Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers record. Uh, I did a Tom Petty ranking that's going to be going up next week. And yeah, there's just some great songs on here, especially Breakdown and American Trump. Pretty, pretty good record. That another one that was in my top 100 and one of my absolute favorites that I listened to yesterday as well. Songs in the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder. Just so, so good. Pretty much the apex of anything soulful, but also a bit poppy. Just love it. I'm just looking at this now, there's like this certain pink thing in here. So I love that. It's so cute. Yeah. But yeah, great record. Next up here. A band that I covered a while ago with one of my favorite records by them. It is Daydream Nation by Sonic Youth. One of the best sort of double records ever, in my opinion. So fun, so good. Just crazy energy all across the board. Next up is going to be the record Heathen by David Bowie. Not one of my favorite David Bowie records, but still a pretty damn solid record. One that I haven't heard. No, one that I've heard once or twice. I know that there are some people that aren't as high on this one. Things really good, still just not one of my favorite David Bowie records, but just great ones. Next up, I have a couple by the band Throwing Muses, being their album University, and the album that I listened to before that I just absolutely fell in love with. It's a new five for me, being the real Ramona. It's truly exceptional work there. Next up, I have two that I talked about with lead singer of this band earlier, The Bell of Underground. The Bell Underground so tailed and loaded. Obviously, neither are at the apex that is the Underground and Nico, but both just really excellent records, especially the self-title. I think it's so great. One of my favorites of that year, for sure. Maybe you'll hear me talk about that at a later date. Afterwards here, I have another Steely Dan being Twig X Nature. I think this album is pretty overhated in some spheres because it beat out Kid A by Radiohead. It's actually pretty solid, really enjoyable album. I really love the uh, bass line of the track, Gasling Abbey, just so great. Really not skipping a beat from where that classic period ended, in my opinion. After this, we have another album that I've been meaning to get to because I've heard great things, and I just think it's a really interesting one. I have that Duism by Erica Badu. Uh, really haven't heard it yet, but really excited to get into it. Then going back to King Crimson with a, one of their later period records, Thrack. I actually like this album a decent bit. 
I think it's really interesting with the different sort of layers on each side. Really, the record runs a bit long, but I still enjoy it. Next up, I have a two records by an artist that I need to look more into. And these I've heard are some of the best, in Tori Amos with Little Earthquakes, as well as Under the Pink. Uh, I know this record, and I like this record. The only other Tori Amos that I actually know is her album Scarlet's Walk, which I absolutely love the song Wednesday, but for whatever reason, I've just yet to dive further into it. So definitely you're going to be excited to check those records out. Next up, I have another one by The Smiths, Louder Than Bombs. Not my favorite Smiths record, but if I were to include it, this is probably my number two behind me is Murder. Probably the best compilation record in general. So I have a self titled Fleetwood Mac. Uh, I'm a pretty massive fan of the Welch era, but even I can't deny the excellent says this is rumors. Really just hard to deny Lindsay Buckingham as a player. And Christine McGee is absolutely sensational in there as well. Uh, Stephen Nicks exists, but it's fine. Next up, I have Mama Said by Lenny Kravitz. This is a really fun record. I'm not the biggest Lenny Kravitz fan, but this one and You Didn't Go My Way, as well as Five, I think are all pretty damn solid. The track, What Goes Around, Comes Around, is one of my favorites on here. I, of course, love uh, Stand By My Woman and In Any Umber Toads Over, like I mentioned in a video that will come out later, being on Style Council. Sounds exactly like one of their songs you would like me to tell now, but it's obviously great because of this. So, next up, another artist that we need to dive into based upon Patrick's recommendation. So, we need a couple records by 10,000 Maniacs here, being Blind Man Zoo, Our Time in Eden, and then In My Tribe, which I have heard in my tribe is very strong. Really cool band. Uh, uh, Indie folk, sort of, yeah, kind of like indie folk, sort of or lower. I don't know. I know what I'm trying to say. It's like an indie folk band in the 80s, so it's really interesting. Next up, I have another Steely Dan adjacent record being Donald Fagan's solo record, The Nightfly. Track IGY on here is so good. It's a really solid record. Words here, another one, because I got into uh, Adrian Ballou. I wanted to get this one shot in the Bears with their self titled album. Next up, I love Elvis Costello. It's an album that I owned on my I never actually owned on CD, but we get happy, which is a really, yeah, really solid record. Kind of came utilizing the Motown influence, but that's sort of a 60s RB style. Really fun. Ooh, this is a record that I really, really love a lot. I think it's a ton of fun. It's going to be a Love Supreme by John Coltrane, just absolutely sublime playing. I'm going to be doing a deep dive into his records from 1963 soon. I'm really excited to get to some more Coltrane. That, of course, being the one that he's most well known for. Next up, I have a good couple by the Cockatoo Twins in Four Calendar Cafe. My favorite, of course, Heaven of Las Vegas. The excellent Rubel Knoll and, of course, the delightful Treasure. Probably these three being my favorite Cockatoo Twins records. They're all just really excellent. I love Elizabeth Frazier as a singer. My all-time favorites. And just their Way for atmosphere and ambiance is just so good. One of the best to ever do it. Next up, I have a couple of Bob Dylan records that I didn't have before, being Time Out of Mind, Bringing It All Back Home, as well as the Freewheeling Bob Dylan. Dylan's an artist I need to get more into. These are obviously even this one where I think it's saying some of his better records, so I wanted to give it a shot. And as well here, yeah, I have three records by the always lovely Aretha Franklin. I have Lady Soul, Young Gifted and Black, as well as I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You. Just such good records. Aretha, obviously, a powerhouse vocalist. Just one of the best. Or to deny it. Well, whoops. Anyways. The last two records that I have here are going to be on two artists that I covered that I wasn't that high on. Being Talking Heads with their debut record, 77, which was my favorite Talking Heads record, as well as my favorite B-52 record, The Cosmic Thing. Both just really great records, really enjoyable, really just kind of fun to listen to. With that being said, that was the Hall of CDs that I got from Patrick. Once again, Really appreciate what you're doing. I think it was a really, really kind and generous thing for you to do. 
And thank you so much for everything. I really hope that it didn't all just break. That being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this kind of off topic video. I might start doing this more for whenever I buy records or buy CDs online. That being said, though, I hope you all have a great one.